Hi, my name's Phil, I like talking about politics and in this video I like to discuss the formation of a new committee of cross-party MPs and business leaders designed to take a closer look at the Brexit trade and cooperation agreement and find ways to improve it in order to reduce trade friction, but is it going to succeed? But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So Hilary Benn is the Labour MP who led the Parliamentary Select Committee on scrutinising the government's actions on leaving the EU, which Boris Johnson scrapped just at the time when that scrutiny was particularly important, has helped set up a new commission that has got nothing to do with the government. It does, however, have cross-party support and includes a Conservative MP. Now, both MPs have been open about the fact that Brexit has had an impact on every sector of our economy. In fact, Conservative MP Roger Gale even went so far as to say every community. Now, I'm not actually sure whether that's really the case right now, but it certainly will be. For example, even if a particular community doesn't have an economy, doesn't have jobs that are dependent upon that European trade, I'm sure that they are in need of consumables that do rely on that trade, like medicines, for example. Now, I don't know about anyone else, but I know that the people in my household who have repeat prescriptions are finding that their pharmacist is having hell of a lot of supply problems on a consistent basis right now. But the purpose of the commission is not to bash ministers over the head for their stupidity, because the government just wouldn't engage. It's designed to offer practical solutions that can be worked on with the EU. And the presence of business leaders should make it more difficult for the government to claim that the commission is either politically motivated or doesn't understand the issues. Now, like all such bodies, it won't produce instant results. In a bit of a wake-up call as to the long-term nature of Brexit now, no matter what happens, their plan is to hear evidence every two weeks for the rest of the year and then produce a report with recommendations. Make no mistake, this will be a challenging task for them. You know, if our democracy wasn't on life support right now, if we had a government who was, uh, let's say we had a government that was left with the Brexit mess, but they wanted to genuinely make the best of it for the country and put the UK first in all of their endeavours, it would still be a challenging enough task because they need to work on proposals that will improve the competitiveness of British businesses in a way that the EU, whom we have chosen to make a competitor, will agree to. Now, sure, there are some things that we could work on independently, like developing custom systems that are fit for purpose, but a lot of things will need EU cooperation, like developing those same custom systems in a way that can integrate with those of our trading partners. As was suggested by the Welsh government recently in building something that allows for easy movement of goods from Ireland to Britain, because at the moment, they're not passing through Britain. And given that the EU aren't going to let us gain a competitive advantage over them, such a task is going to be daunting for anyone. However, this commission has an extra layer of challenge. See, the thing is that the deal is crap. It's deliberately crap so that Johnson can pursue his misguided Singapore on the Thames idea. So we'll get to the end of 2021 and the government will be presented with this report. They didn't ask for it and they'll not be receiving it with any great level of enthusiasm. Their intention right now, I am absolutely certain, is to publicly thank the Commission for its efforts, but to say that they are already well advanced with measures designed to help trade, but that the EU are being difficult, so they're encouraging businesses to engage with what they ludicrously call the opportunities of emerging markets. In order to have any impact at all, two things are going to need to be true here. One is that some of the measures need to be ones that would work alongside the Tories' insane hard Brexit mindset. The idea of moving away from that path this year is not realistic. Secondly, there will need to be public pressure to do something of genuine benefit. Because right now, the government are still trying to push the line that Brexit trade has picked up and it's all normal now. As 2021 rolls merrily on, 
this will be both easier and harder to say. It will be harder in that as more data comes out showing that lack of trade compared to previous years, it will be less and less believable. But it will also be easier in that the government will not compare it to previous years, they'll compare it to last year when the pandemic massively suppressed trade in a way that had little to do with Brexit. It will be important to highlight the damage that Brexit is doing to our economy and to our jobs. The pandemic will also need to be a less important factor because at the moment it's a huge factor. If we find ourselves in 2022 in the same position as 2021, that is a winter surge of the coronavirus that is distracting attention away from Brexit, then it may be much more difficult for the report to gain traction. It might be impossible in fact. Of course, if we're still in the same position a year later with the pandemic, then the public may finally stop giving this government the benefit of the doubt on their handling of it, but that still won't focus attention on Brexit. But if we're in a much better position with the coronavirus emergency, then people's attentions will inevitably turn to the next most pressing emergency, Brexit. Even if we exit the pandemic emergency and the government managed to fool people that they came through in the end, it will only do them limited good. People care less about what good a government did, only what good they're going to do now. We could see this with the Second World War. Everyone still these days raves about Winston Churchill's leadership during the Second World War. Went to the polls very shortly after the end of the Second World War and Winston Churchill lost. Thanks very much, very appreciative of his efforts, but that was then, we don't think you're the Prime Minister for now. That same political truism will be true here as well. This is why the government, regardless of what happens, are going to be facing a tough time again this autumn. Only this time, it'll be harder for them to shake the pressure off. Because in autumn, we are going to get another coronavirus surge. Now, we'll get one this summer as well, but Boris Johnson seems confident that it won't overwhelm the NHS, which is the trigger for lockdowns and restrictions. Um, and that's something I'd like to pick on on a separate video. But let's just say that's true. I've got absolutely no reason to doubt that this summer will be manageable. Whether it's good is another matter, but it will be manageable. But autumn seems to be a different matter. We'll all of a sudden, yet again, get an explosion of indoor mingling as we would every autumn. Test and trace seems to have been completely abandoned in terms of making it fit for purpose. Now, Johnson seems to be banking on the fact that the vaccine rollout will keep that surge down to manageable levels forevermore so that there won't be any further need for lockdowns. So let's say that's true. People will then start to lose focus on the pandemic. After all, we've come out the other end. Yeah, Boris Johnson said we're coming to the end. We have come to the end. Right, it's, it's no longer their prime concern. Their prime concern will be jobs and their standard of living. The government have gotten away with the damage caused by the pandemic because people don't blame the government for the pandemic. Now, it's very hard it seems, for a population to know if a government is doing well enough, especially when the media aren't really shining a spotlight. They only really know whether a situation is the fault of the government or not. The government didn't cause the pandemic, so they get a pass. But economic woes after the pandemic are a different matter. They said we'd prosper mightily after Brexit. We won't be doing. They said there'd be no more austerity. There is. Those emergency powers that the government have been using to quietly sell off large chunks of the NHS will be gone. They'll be up for another vote at the end of September, I think it is, end of September, early October. Well, if the surge is manageable at that point, Parliament are unlikely to renew them. The government will have to start being more transparent about their public spending. The political consequences of Brexit will also be biting, especially in Northern Ireland, if the SNP win that majority in next month's Scottish elections, there'll also be pressure on the union as well. The pandemic actually petering out this summer, never to form a serious surge again, is probably Boris Johnson's worst nightmare. It will be the signal for all of his chickens to come back home to roost. But then what if the vaccine doesn't do enough to contain the autumn surge? What if it threatens to overwhelm the NHS again? That may help him distract from Brexit and other political consequences, but then he'll have a different problem. The vaccine will have helped, but not solved the problem. So, so what's going to solve the problem, Prime Minister? He'll have run out of options then. 
If the vaccine alone doesn't deal with the pandemic, the only thing left to do surely will be actually following the scientific advice properly, not trying to water it down. That will be strongly opposed by his own party. But anyway, back to that Brexit committee and whether or not it will have any real impact will very much depend on how the COVID smokescreen is doing. If it's abated, then it will be of much more interest to the public. It will be the real and present danger. You know, Brexit will be biting harder then as well. If COVID is still the real and present danger, however, then it may not be doing Johnson's reputation any more good, but it will mean that people will be less interested in the finer points of Brexit. I suspect people can only cope with one epoch-shattering emergency at a time. But those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.